What's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing some uh, stuff with the tank. Uh, I'm going to be taking the T5s down for now. <clears throat> and it's not because I don't like them. Uh, one of the ballasts is having an issue. And uh, two of the bulbs aren't coming on. And I don't want to ruin the bulbs because they're brand new. And I just spent like 80 bucks on them. So I don't want to ruin the bulbs. And I got a feeling if one ballast is going to do it, the other one's probably going to do it. Because these are old ballasts that I got used. And I think I'm having an issue because <clears throat> I'm not able to ground it to anything. So I'm going to take them off for now and um, wait till the fixtures come in. I bought some uh, Aqua Trader T5 fixtures and I'm going to be um, pretty much gutting those and putting in these reflectors and then the bulbs, of course. I'm going to use their ballast for a little bit, but in the long run, I'd ultimately like to get... Um, probably a better quality ballast I don't know I've never used the aqua trader lights before so I don't know what the quality is on their ballast but I can only assume that for a $50 fixture they can't be super great quality but I'm not knocking them I can't say anything about them because I haven't used them I'm um, just going off assumptions right now <clears throat> um, but in the long haul I eventually probably want to get some better ballast um, I more or less bought the um, aqua trader uh, fixtures for the fixture not the ballast not the light bulbs um, obviously not the reflectors um, that's why I'm gonna be using these reflectors um, I just wanted the fixture that way it looks clean the bulbs fit in there real nice and then I'll be switching the lights the the LEDs lengthwise across the tank and then still sticking with my same plan of using two LEDs on either side of the LEDs the T5s on either side of the LEDs I don't know if I said that right, but I corrected it anyways. So <clears throat> the T5 is going to come down for now. And today, I kind of had a little bit of an early day so uh, from work. So I'm going to do some work on the tank. I really want to clean up the wiring and get everything labeled. I got the label maker ready to go. I <clears throat> started labeling my dosing pump and everything. I'm going to be cleaning this up. Uh, if you guys remember, when I first started building the tank, I wanted to... <clears throat> Put all my electrical in this upper part of this side cabin in here so that's what i'm hoping to accomplish today um but we'll see <laughs> but that's that's in in the long run that's what i want to accomplish is get all my electrical in there and clean up this mess here take some wires out because there's some there's some stuff that's still in that tangled jumble of shit that <clears throat> isn't even used anymore like this cord right here all oh, that one goes to there there's a ballast in here somewhere that's not being used I just got too carried away with trying different things and not removing and keeping things organized so um, but I did turn the uh, white lights on only for you guys so you get a peep at uh, what the tank looks like um, the glass is hella dirty right now so you're probably not gonna be able to see too much but um, you can definitely see the growth better this way got a ton of frags all over the place uh, got these little mini frag racks they're pretty sweet excuse me the anemone so far has stayed down here, so I'm super stoked about that. Hoping it stays there, and I really want to move my green stylo back up. Um, but everything on the frag racks are doing good, except for the ones that keep getting knocked off by my snail. So I got some Milliporo frags all over the tank, actually, that I need to pick up. So hopefully we can do that today. You know, it's crazy. A lot of people will tell you the white lights don't really show a lot of color, but I see a ton of purples in all of these coral with just the white lights on right now. Like the mushrooms, the uh, Garf Bonsai, the tricolor. You can really see the pink in the bird's nest. Now the bird's nest is having a hard time and I think it's because there is an enormous mushroom growing directly underneath the colony. So I think that's kind of killing it off. Wow. Yeah, cool. So I, I don't look at the tank very often when it's just white lights so even I'm kind of like, oh. There's a lot of purple. Pretty sweet. So, anyways, <clears throat> I'm going to get going on the wiring. I'm not going to record a lot of me doing the work because it's just going to take a long time. <clears throat> so, I'll come at you guys when I kind of get it organized or maybe a couple of steps through. So, later. Whew. Well, here's some advice for you guys. When you set your tank up or you're trying to add some new equipment, just do the wiring because this has been one heck of a project. But as you can see, all the wiring's cleaned up. These are uh, from the T5s. And I got the uh, DJ Power Strip over here. 
and I got everything labeled. I got the Smart Wave, the Skimmer, the ATO, the Return Pump, and the Dosing Pump. And this one is just the miscellaneous uh, one I'm using right now. Um, when I get the T5 fixture all settled, when I get the new ones in and retrofit it and everything, um, I'm going to be wiring in some of these right here. I got these uh, Ecotech Panorama, whatever, I don't even know what they are. Some sort of strip. Panorama LED module. Um, so yeah, I got two of these over my frag rack because I wasn't getting enough light over here to sustain, sustain the SPS that I have on the frag rack so um, I put two of those over here how long that stays with the tank I'm not 100% sure but that's what I'm using for right now um, so wiring's looking good I got the dosing pump as well um, set up here I got the dosing container down here and um, this one's the alkalinity this one's a calcium um, the feed tube and then the one that the ones that go to the tank go out some holes that I drilled back there and I had to cut out this little notch right here um, so I could push the dosing pump back and still have the heads here and have my cords comfortably there without getting pinched so I could put this door back on so um, I think that's it I gotta groove out a little area for these buttons right here in the door and this is when I wish I had a damn router, so I'm going to use like a grinder or something. <laughs> but I got to make a little groove here um, so the DJ strip isn't getting beat up either. So that'll be the next thing that I'm getting ready to do. All the wires are nice and zip tied so they can be traced real easy. Um, I'm going to put some ventilation in here. I'm going to drill a nice big hole into the door and then put a ventilation fan so we can keep the, uh, the electronics cool. So. I still got to support this end right here so that's what I'm gonna do right now alright guys so there it is for tonight um, I'm pretty much done there's actually not much more to do um, I don't have the door on because I just don't have the capabilities of notching this out I'm gonna go to my dad's this weekend and he's got a nice router table we'll get that all notched out kinda sucks cause I was really excited to kinda enclose all that but it doesn't matter I gotta still uh, design the cooling fan part of it so um, so yeah the power strip the DJ strip everything's labeled except for that miscellaneous one got the dosing pump in there I kinda got all this bucket full of the miscellaneous stuff for like fragging and the Aptasia X super glue the Julian's feeder and some of my coral foods <clears throat> kinda packed right there for right now until I figure out um, what I'm gonna do on the inside of the stand I'm gonna be building a shelf inside of the stand for this kind of stuff. Um, I got my Red Sea Coral Colors program stuff all down there. So that's pretty much that. I gotta reprime these pumps because there's nothing in them now. So I gotta get them so they got a solid stream of liquid going through. That way I'm getting the right amount of calcium and alkalinity. Everything's nice and cleaned up under here now. Everything that is close to the floor that I couldn't get above the water has a nice drip loop on it for the most part though everything is up above the the, uh, the sump so nothing should really drip on it unless something happens with the tank but um, yeah I'm happy about this this was a much bigger project than I anticipated actually I didn't think it was gonna be this much but it is what it is next will be um, reconfiguring some of my plumbing because my plumbing is kind of a mess because again I did a lot of experimenting with different reactors and the the, uh, the refugium, so I got to get that all cleaned up. I'm actually taking out the uh, the BRS dual reactor. I haven't been using it now for over a month. The only thing I'm using is my MR1 skimmer um, for my carbon. I'm not running GFO anymore. Um, I don't know, I just didn't see any benefit to it anymore because the refugium really started taking care of 90% of my issues that I was having. And um, I just felt like the GFO was kind of stripping the water too much. Because um, the last time I changed my GFO, which I think was in my tape maintenance video. No, no it wasn't. I did that after that. But anyways, last time I changed the GFO, um, some of my acro started having some some problems um, some of them started bleaching I actually got some um, 
RTN on a couple of them and lost them. So um, after I got done running the GF, after I turned the reactor off, um, things kind of started to turn around. So I don't know 100% if it was the, the GFO or not, but um, things seem to be doing extremely well, kind of going the all-natural way with the refugium. So, yep, that's that's it. Everything's all nicey nice. I super glued the uh, Jabo return pump thing there, and there's two. There's one RW15 and one WP40 controller super glued. <laughs> I actually used some coral gel. That stuff works great to mount those. Better than that double-sided sticky tape shit. That's not gonna ever fall. So yeah, guys, um, there's the wiring project. <laughs> Everything looks nice. I always have this cover off because I look at the refugium a lot too. I actually got to do some maintenance on that. I got to scrub some of the glass or the acrylic. Anyways, um, the last thing I got to do is take down the T5 Nightmare up there. And uh, we'll just wait for the um, Aqua Traders T5 to come in. And we're going to retrofit those uh, light fixtures onto this rack. Uh, from what I measured, the... Uh, the 36 inch fixture should spread out enough with the hangers that I could still put it on this rail so we'll see what happens there so anyways y'all um, I gotta plug my blue light back in because I wanted you guys to be able to get a glimpse at what you can see of the corals anyways because my glass is so dirty um, but yeah here it is oh, oh that's one thing after I made that last video um, I don't know, just a little update video of that. I remember showing you guys this one, specifically this Millipora over here. It STN'd out of nowhere, and I think it's from the reef cement that I used. So I'm not 100% sure, but as soon as I started seeing the STN at the base, I fragged the entire top of it off, and every single part that I fragged off is doing great that's about 90% of the frags all over the tank right now but um yeah ever since I fragged it they've been doing just fine they haven't been continuing the STN so I'm not sure exactly what happened there but I broke it off of the rock because it was really close to the Aura Joe and so I wanted to move it kind of over closer to the hammers so I used this uh, stuff by Nios it's called reef cement and that's when shit hit the fan with it so I don't know I know that stuff gets really hot when you use it anyways blabbered on long enough guys um, thanks for watching if you have any suggestion for anything really um, go ahead and leave me a comment and we will see you in the next one later